and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Reddington's fortune. It's aggro day. We are going to be attacking a whole bunch today. And our next deck that we're going to be playing is going to be Sharima, Bilgewater. We're going to have aggro. We're going to have scouts. We're going to have lots of attacks. We're going to have uh, vulnerable enemies and it should be pretty sweet. So look at our two champions. Of course, Misfortune, we're going to want to attack a whole bunch with hopefully four times with Misfortune in play to level her up. We're gonna have the Island Navigator be a scout in here um, that will be able to attack multiple times, but then we'll have Playful Trickster and Citrus Courier also getting those um, additional attacks in. You can see this is this deck, I based it around the Azir's Fortune deck that we played like a week or two ago that was really good, uh, but you know, trying out Reddington with the big Overwhelm instead of Azir. And so we're getting rid of all the Sand Soldier stuff uh, like with Azir and instead going with like the, the challenge package. So we're gonna have Rock Hoppa and Hired Gun together to be able to give enemies vulnerable. And then we'll have Exhaust and Yi Ben Warned. This is a cool Bilgewater card to give stuff vulnerable. It is slow speed, but it gives it vulnerable. If we kill it, we draw a card. That should work out really well with the ranked in, but it is the slow speed, but it can get us some extra card draw. Also, we're going to have some Powder Monkeys still. We're going to keep two Monkey Idols in here for some Powder Monkeys, and those always work pretty well with vulnerable stuff because you just throw your monkeys into um, the different blockers. Go with Ruin Runner on the uh, five mana slot. I was trying to decide between Ruin Runner and Razor Scale Hunter. Cause like this is like a scout for misfortune and it's vulnerable for Reddington, so like it seems like it like this is like perfect for this deck. But still, we're talking about a six four overwhelm spell shield, <laughs> right? Like it's just like the the like the power difference. I think we're gonna go with the ruin runner, but that's something to think about while we play ruin runners. Would or just like while this is in our hand, would this be better as like the razor scale hunter, right? So like that's something to be thinking about whenever we're playing the game. Maybe this card will be better, but we'll see. All right, but anyway, this is gonna be our deck. Let's attack, let's challenge, let's deal some damage, and let's have some fun. Reddington's Fortune. Ooh. All right, Bilgewater PNZ. Close to us, we're Bilgewater Sharima. All right, so I'm gonna keep the Dune Keeper and we're just gonna mulligan cards that cost a decent amount. We'll just retry that. The Emperor commands. Humanity is obsolete. See what we see. That's unfortunate that they had the very best card against Doomkeeper in their deck. That is unfortunate. Just one Rhine Negation to, you know, do stuff. Keep having the best possible card. This is our way. Feels like they have Mystic Shot as well, how they're just not doing stuff. Which is obviously not good for me. Don't stand in my way. I'm gonna wait on this even warrant. Yep. Yeah, they just had best possible card with a ballistic bot at turn two. And then the, the Twisted Fate Mystic Shot was the best possible this turn. The got me 
seen tombs, towns, and everything in between. So, was that a stress testing? Stack in the odds. Seven out of eight. Yeah, unfortunately, this is a second Yiban Worn, not an exhaust, right? Like, that would have been really nice to have, like, one exhaust, one Yiban Worn. Because we used the Yiban Worn earlier, and that's fine. But this here, we really want exhaust, where we would be able to have the... Yeah, like, that's... We really need exhaust right here. Have the ability to just attack immediately. Yeah, I can't. I just can't take the time to go ranked in and let them do all their blue card, red card, gold card stuff. Which they still can, but make their life more difficult. So planning on going Citrus Courier. We got a lot of damage in. But they have drawn a million cards. Fortunately, we don't get to like just slam Renekton and then also hold up Ride Negation. Yeah, they don't have a ton of life and, and us healing three on our Nexus. Going back up to 19 is nice. But you never know with what they can have. This can just, you know, we could just die here. Because Verbal Fish costing zero mana is fair for some reason, like somehow. I mean, that's 16 damage. Get bloody, get paid. And that's 20. Why? Why does that have to cause zero mana? <laughs> Alright, Zoe Lee Sin. It's our next deck. We're gonna get rid of the Trickster, but I think I kinda wanna keep the rest of this stuff. I really do I, I do like Island Navigator quite a bit. I like the exhaust against Zoe. The desert by my side. Could do one of these, but I, I kind of wanted to save those for Renekton. And like, it, this is just a mountain goat, right? Like, I, we probably want to like save these for champions also, and for Renekton. We probably don't really need to do either of those. Speak, stars. Speak, I say. The spirit gives to those who listen. I want a bloody path through Shorima. Shorima. So the attack in, I do get to block, which is starts going towards that Rennington level up. No. Alright, so they get a bunch of gems.
Come on, let us rally. At least, the good news is if it doesn't work, they don't get to slam Lisa in this turn. That's like the good news. All right, cool. Does this just like one mana draw card against Ephemerals? Because they, they die this round, right? So it's just one mana draw card. Right? Would you look at this place? If I challenge that with the Rennington, we can level up Rennington. Okay, well, we're not going to challenge it with the Rennington. Alright, so we made them waste a couple of gems, so that's good. And we'll die, we'll draw a card, thank you. <laughs> Spell shield. Yep. Vulnerable regions unite. That's what we got going on here. I'd well, rather a big Eye of the Dragon than big Lee Sin. That's for certain. Six, seven. I don't really feel like giving them the gems for the side of the dragon. Oh dear. Fortune favors the bold. The ocean is no place for the weak. For the weak. And so Pale Cascade doesn't save this thing. They can block with the Mountain Goat in Pale Cascade. But... Ugh, Guiding Touch. I should be afraid. I'm too airborne. Okay, so they they get the gems, so now they can use the gems to to heal me to the sea. this thing. But it does stay vulnerable. I get to play a 3-3 Jagged Butcher that can challenge it. And with the Misfortune, that's 4 damage. That can take care of the 3 gems if they just go gem, gem, gem. I think Zoe Lee Sin's a tier 1 deck. I wouldn't necessarily agree with that, but... It's the kind of deck that's going to be a, a polar... Like a kind of a polarizing deck that like whenever you have your champions and your spells that go with them it's really really hard to stop like it's the best zoe lisa in hands beat the best hands of a lot of other decks Uh, okay, so it's tier one, but there's S tier above tier one. Dead or alive. Hmm. Let's get to it. Guns blazing. Finger on the trigger. This is me. I am their end. All right, so this is me trading misfortune for mountain goat. No, I guess I guess they could trade it for Rennington also though. They could trade basically 
So they can kill one of my champions with Miss Fort with the Mountain Goat. That was a that was a really good Equinox. But it, so one of my champions dies, but we they take a lot of damage. Okay, I guess maybe not that much damage. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven damage. Down to six. That was a really good Equinox for them. <laughs> Isn't it fun randomly getting the tool you need most of the time for every specific situation that might be relevant? Yep. Because without it, without that Equinox, our Rennington's not dying. You know, like we wouldn't attack with the Misfortune at that point, but our Rennington doesn't die. It does a ton of damage overwhelm to them, and we also draw a card. So like we'd have Rennington and leveled up. We'd have leveled up Rennington in play still. We would have drawn a card. They just passed. Seriously. Um, that's got to be the gain five life. I want to level up this misfortune. That's got to be like the gain five life card, right? Love ya. The. Or maybe not. That's Captain Fortune. Or they just didn't have anything else. Maybe they had to gain five, and if I would have attacked with everything, they would have gained five, but since I did like that attack, then they didn't have a chance of winning anymore, so they just said GG's. Zoe Aphelios, my favorite. Alright, we're one and one. So this is a pretty decent two, three, four. I don't have so I, I think we're gonna keep. We don't have any champion, we don't have a one drop. Kind of. But we do have something to use with like the one spell mana that we save. So I'm gonna keep. You know, the powder monkeys kind of work well with the rock hoppa. That was like best possible case scenario for me, and they still have you know the additional card. they're going to be able to play like regular moon weapon and then the gravitum moon weapon okay i played that of course i would like to play rennington that would be my my favorite card to play here and you know be able to challenge with rennington 
but both the Island Navigator and the Ruin Runner have a higher probability of killing Aphelios than what Renekton does. I'm going with the Island Navigator because this would mean that they would have to keep Aphelios alive for multiple combat steps. Which is not easy to do. I'll save you, been warned. Yeah, I think we're gonna save it. Yeah, I was, <clears throat> I was worried about like pill cascade type cards, like with these, with these things. Also, that was certainly a worry. I know that box bus gets to kill that. I can't really do too much about like that that box bus being pretty good. Yeah, I've got an aggro day today. This is our way. Lots of aggro today. So a spell grows this thing to be larger. If I have Renekton challenge the box to puss, a pill cascade kills my Renekton. The brighter my light, the stronger your shadow. I imagine that's game over. I don't I don't really imagine multiple moon weapons, all these cards, Aphelios. I, yeah, I don't really imagine us winning this game. Nasus. No, no retreat. Always forward. Ha! Hold still. Hey, keep drawing one drops. Great. But now when you have all the mana, moon weapons, Aphelios, Veil Temple, you have won the game. Does it say, it doesn't tell me which one they got, Crescendum or Infernum? I know I could have countered that with Ride of Negation. I think I'm going to counter the next one. 
you know, Chris end up like getting another box to puss. Or Inferno with the Overwhelm. Going with the overwhelm. Nothing like a stink of blood and sweat. But you know, good thing. Good thing they made Aphelios a 3 2. That sure makes the card fair. Because it's not. Getting a million moon weapons that makes the card broken or anything. It's it's the third point of health. Alright, one and two. Weapons. It get make these moon weapons worse. You know, every moon weapon doesn't have to be an amazing spell and you don't have to have amazing selection between them. It's not about it's not like making a Phalios a one one. Like it's it's not about that. It's about the moon weapons. It's just not. It's just not fair. <laughs> like that's really. That's. I mean. It's. That's. It's as simple as. It's like really as simple as that. It's just not fair to be able to choose from five amazing cards and then continually choose every single turn. And and usually like whenever you, you like you play, you can get two of them in one turn. It's like that's. It's as simple as that. It's just. It's just not not fair compared to everything else in the game. All right, anyway, uh, next, Azir, Sivir, Darius. All right, so we're going to keep the, the cheap stuff, Mulligan the expensive stuff. All right, uh, let's start the new prediction. Gun is strongest enemy. No one's the wiser. Sand and blood. Ooh, got some fight in I probably should have blocked that sand soldier with the crackshot corsair. Would I rather keep Crackshot Corsair and kill the Doomkeeper? I don't think I'll kill Crackshot Corsair. Like something that could that could make Aphelios a lot better is make it make it like where you know Aphelios, sure you get a moon weapon. Now uh, this is just kind of a thought that I had with y'all talking in chat. Like what if you just like get a moon weapon, but you don't just keep creating a whole bunch of more moon weapons. You'd have to change the level up, level up for some other way. But kind of like Twisted Fate, Twisted Fate you get you know one of the cards. So you like with Aphelios you can get a moon weapon, and then. And then basically after Aphelios levels up with whatever thing you used for the, the level up, when after Aphelios levels up, then you can start getting like another moon weapon a turn, like round star create a moon weapon. War Mason, reporting for duty. The few for the Sacrifice. 
Well, you can't choose where you put the 1-1. One, one. You said they shouldn't put the 1-1 one, one last. I mean, the 1-1 the one, one just comes into play from Azir after you attack. It just comes into play last. You can't affect that. I know I could challenge, like, the 1-1 one, one and... Like, I, I could challenge, like, the... Yeah, I could have the Ruin Runner challenge, like, a 1-1, one, one, but... I think I just want to get a zero out of here. I I think that's my best play. Cause I I can't do like lethal no matter how I do it. So let's just kill a zero. Pretty similar decks. We haven't drawn a champion yet, though. I would like a champion. So close to dying. Victory at any cost. I guess they drew something that's going to kill me. That's really too bad. So much direct damage. Darn. Their last two draws were Decimate and Auction Fervor. That's too bad. That was a good game, though. But it's, it's aggro day today. I'm not thinking too much about my blocks on aggro day. <laughs> that was a good game. All right, we, we actually we have champions. We could have turn three misfortune for the first time in five games. They forced us to choose death or the blade. Lunari, rise. See what we see. If it's made of sand, I can light. Out of my way. All right, we will draw a card. be amazing if they just do not cast the card of Elios this game. Alright, well, can't play Misfortune. That was a nice Rock Hoppa. Lots of ways to go here. Dangerous what a shame for you. Just gonna use the vulnerable thing on this you know, like, I know I could play Misfortune now, and then we have, like, Misfortune's Champion spell, which is good against 3-1. Why? The brighter my light, the stronger your shadow. This is our 
away. Reach out, Aphelios. They, they don't know what to do. Their Aphelios is dead. They don't know what to do. I don't want to trade Island Navigator for Rockhopper, especially with having Misfortune in hand. The 2-2 trading for it isn't the best for me with the Misfortune, but the 2-2 is vulnerable also, so... I like that card. I'm planning on playing Misfortune this turn. Then open attacking with the scouts. And then after open attack, then we can play Renekton. And then attack with everything and playful trickster. I do play Make It Rain. We will not have enough mana for a Rennington Playful Trickster next turn. Last buys me a new sail. <laughs> when a Pelios dies, the opponent just doesn't know what to do. I know, right? Okay, first attack. Believe or burn. Love ya. Oh. Haven't done very much damage. They're still at 16. Haven't yet. If I play Runnington, we're not going to be able to challenge anything with Runnington anyway. Or at least I'm not, and then also able to do Playful Trickster. Maybe we don't do Playful Trickster. So we can only do one of these two, Rankton or Playful. So we'll go with the higher gun. I like that Vulnerable with the Misfortune ability, but we can only do one of these two, either Rankton or Playful Trickster. I would have loved to be able to do all three, but we're a mana short from being able to do all three. All right, we don't have the misfortune helping keep that alive anymore, but My board. yeah, I could have pulled on the one one. I like the Rankton growing though. If we pull, on, if we pull on the one one, we deal two less damage. Like our chances. We have an awesome board, and we've got two rally cards in hand. My spirit shines. So might as well play that uh, Mega Rain right now, because I wasn't going to be able to play the Mega Rain anyway after, especially with them doing that challenge. Let's kill that. And there we go. That's how we do things in Bilgewater. I was going to go from zero misfortune attacks to the next turn. I was going to level up misfortune, right? Because we're going to do, we're, I was going to do the scout attack, and then like the normal attack with everybody, with like trickster, and then like, or I guess, I guess you go normal attack with everybody first, and then I guess you can kind of see if they make like a block that you have to trickster, you can. If you don't, you can citrus courier, and then attack again after the citrus courier with everybody. And then go with the playful trickster. <laughs> and then attack again. We were going to attack four times the next turn. That was going to be sweet. All right. Well, we ended up going two and three with Runnington's Fortune. Um, got to do a bunch of really cool stuff with this deck. I enjoy playing it. It's a fun one to play. Um, you know, we didn't have, like, the best record, but that's okay. It was a fun one to play. You've been warned. Um, sometimes it was pretty awesome, you know, with the vulnerable draw a card. Other times the, the slow speed did hurt. It really hurt the one time with the uh, Equinox 
that my opponent was able to play after my Eve been worn to keep their thing from being vulnerable. That that hurt one game, but um, Ruin Runner was all right. But it's probably the card that should be played there. Ride negation seemed a little slow, um, but yeah, I mean, so yeah, we went two and three, and uh, like one of them, like the game four, I think it was, where we played like the mirror match. I did have like the two blocks that I could have made that I think that we win the game if I would have made you know against the Noxus deck. If I would have made the two blocks on the Sand Soldiers, I could have had four more life. And I think we we would have won that game, but they top decked the, uh, you know, the burn spell to kill me, unfortunately. And so if I just if I just make those blocks, or if they don't top deck the burn spell, either one of those things, then we're looking at a three and two instead of two and three, and you know, the, then we're feeling a little better about the deck. So that's how close the games are. Um, but I think I think our deck was was pretty well, uh, or did pretty well. Probably not quite as good as the Azir's Fortune. I think maybe going with Azir and all the Sand Soldiers, maybe that was a little more powerful than Renekton. I was um, a little disappointed with Renekton in this kind of deck. I think that um, maybe as far as like Renekton and uh, attacking multiple times and challengers and stuff like that, maybe going Renekton with Demacia would have been a little bit better. But I was I was happy to play this version. I was, um, you know, I, I, I was happy to play like these build water cards and stuff. They're fun to play. All right, but that's Renekton's Fortune. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And as always, feel free to leave those comments as well. I always appreciate those. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for the next video.